start full-timing in a month and a half and we've purchased and gotten set up with most of the stuff that we're going to need for for this whole adventure and since we moved here from Hawaii we only really brought clothes so pretty much everything that we need to take on this adventure we've had to buy and I thought it would be interesting to go through and and do a sort of postmortem you know how much did we spend everything that we bought everything that we're bringing on this trip with us and yeah and how much it all cost in total in the end and in our case it's it's you know we have a pretty accurate and realistic estimate of what it costs because we started with nothing you know if we had been living here in a house you know we would have had certain items that we would need to purchase like jumper cables for the car or even a car maybe we already have a tow vehicle but since we came with nothing we had to buy absolutely everything and I kept track of everything and I kept track of how much everything costs so it's easy for me to go back now and the first obvious thing to start with is the Airstream which obviously is also the most expensive purchase that we had to make for this and here's the window sticker for the Airstream and as they have it here it's the MSRP is $101,709 now when I was back in Hawaii and we were first thinking about doing this I went online and started you know questioning like hey how much do people pay for their airstreams you know as far as MSRP and how much do they get off is it I mean do people pay full this price do they get discounts because you know I have no idea um, what they normally sell for and I was surprised to find that there was a pretty good consensus of people saying that hey I get you know 10 to 15 we get 10 to 15 percent off of MSRP um, now I don't know if that's realistic or not when I came here but I'm like all right well that's good to know so when we first got to Austin you know the airstream that we wanted was a 30 FB we had to have that because of the bunks because of the kids and they did have one in the local airstream dealership they also had a couple of used ones one for sale in Houston that was a few years later we were I was kind of limited in that I wanted to get a 2015 or newer or 16 I forget it's the one where they started putting the duct work in instead of having the air conditioning units you know inside the inside the trailer because they're much quieter and they um, you know they distribute the air a lot better the quiet the sound was a big deal since I'm gonna be working from here you know I don't want it to be loud all day so I wanted to get a newer one so that kind of limited my range of what I was gonna buy and they had so they had a 2018 so it's just a year old in Houston for sale for 87,000 a used one um, but I first went down to the local dealership and they had this one that we're in here right now and I asked them, you know we, we I sat down with the saleswoman and I asked all right well what's you know I'm gonna go look at this used one here but what's the best number you guys can give me here so I can kind of compare apples to oranges you know and she said well you know it's it is what it is or blah 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 give me a song and dance and so are you sure she's like well let me get the sale the head sales guy so the head sales manager came into their office and he starts, you know, I mean, he, he went into this whole spiel about, <clears throat> he actually started saying, um, you know, Airstream customers, you know, people that buy Airstreamers, Airstreams, they're not hagglers, you know. If you're looking for a dealership, you know, where you haggle over the price and stuff, um, you know, we're not the dealership for you then, you know, because the type of person that buys an Airstream, they don't really haggle. You know, and I'm just, I'm thinking like, who, I, mean, I guess I'm not a real Airstreamer, I don't know, or, you know, but, and then he starts going to this whole spiel about how, you know, if he has a, you know, this thing's going to sell, you know, quick, he only gets so many on the lot, and blah, blah, you know, my eyes are like glazing over, because, you know, I'm not going to fault the guy for trying to get the best price he can. I mean, if he can sell it for, for a list, then great, I mean, who, I'm not, who am I to stop him? Like, great. But at the same time, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't go do my own due diligence and say, all right, well, okay, your best price then is list, is what you're saying, and go and check out and see if I can get it for a better price somewhere else, right? So, you know, I said, he gave me this whole, he must have gone on for 20 minutes while I glazed over, and finally, you know, I said, all right, so you're, that's your best price then, I guess, list. He's like, yeah, okay, you know, if you change your mind, blah, 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 and, and so we parted on friendly terms and whatnot, and, um, and I was going to go to Houston to look at that $87,000 one. Then 
two days later, I get a call from the saleswoman and, you know, she says, hi, how you doing? You know, are you still interested? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go look at this, uh, this used one. She said, oh, really? You know, well, uh, and how much is that one? I'm like, it's $87,000. Wow. Well, you know, well, we're having, we're having a lot of uh, Christmas specials now. So, you know, we might be able to help you out a little bit more over here. I said, okay. She said, let me just, let me talk to my manager again and then I'll, and I'll call you right back. I said, fine. So a few minutes later, I get a call back from her and she says, okay, so that one in Houston is a year old and it's $87,000. What would you say if we offered you this 2019 one for $87,000 and you get our lifetime warranty? Would that be a, a better deal for you? I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah, obviously I want one that's a year newer, uh, you know, with a, with a warranty. Great. Yes. Yes, I will take it. He's like, will you, will you put the deposit down right now? Sure. And bam, I did it. I put the deposit down and I mean, I just find it. I mean, it's hilarious how, you know, Airstreamers do not haggle. But, you know, I think buying a car, buying anything, you got to be completely non-emotional, right? I mean, you buy a car, if you're willing to walk off the lot, I mean, they're always going to chase you down because they know 80 to 90% of the people that walk off a lot, they don't come back. Um, and so, you know, I'm, obviously the guy's trying to get the best price he can, but, <laughs> and I mean, I guess Airstreamers do haggle, you know, even with buying houses in real estate, you know, you'll always get the best price you can get if you're not emotional about the purchase. And that's so key in, in buying anything. Um, and as it turns out, $87,000. So plus tax, you know, the final, so the final total for the Airstream was, uh, Ninety-two thousand eight hundred ninety-seven dollars and twenty-eight cents, um, because we had to pay the blood-sucking government their uh, sales tax. Although I probably shouldn't say that, because uh, Texas doesn't have state income tax, and they suck a lot less blood than Hawaii's government <laughs> did. So, and the other, and then when I went to pick up the Airstream, and so I paid for it, and then the salesman gets me to his office, and they're still trying to sell me the like for these cushions if they get stained or ripped and stuff they replace them like for free or, or whatever but and you know i said no to that because it was like two thousand dollars i don't know i don't know what it was it was expensive and then also the coating all around the airstream the coating on the aluminum that they put on and then they re-put on or whatever and again that was like uh, really expensive and then an extended warranty on top of their existing quote lifetime warranty and that was expensive too all these things were thousands of dollars. And he's asking me, so do you want this? And, and I'm like, mm, let me, do I have to decide now? Can I think about it? No, you got to decide now before we make the purchase final. I'm like, well then, no, I, I don't want it. And he actually went into a whole spiel about, you know, Airstreams are the Ferraris of, of RV trailers. And, you know, if you bought a Ferrari, you know, wouldn't you want to get insurance on it? <laughs> Again, my, my eyes are glazing over. You're like, oh. <laughs> And I, you know, I said, no, 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 no. And then after I said, no, 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 apparently he said that, he said I was the first customer in seven years that did not opt for all those insurances, <laughs> which I mean, I kind of think that's probably bullshit, but whatever. Again, he's just doing his job. His job is to sell me on as much stuff as he can. My job is to say no as much as I can. So in all in all, you know, I'm happy. They were, they're, they're, they're good. The dealership's good. I mean, they took care of me. And um, eighty-seven thousand dollars, you know, being the final sale price plus tax, uh, coincidentally is fourteen and a half percent below the listing price. So, right on the money as far as what all these people said online. Hey, we get ten to fifteen percent off, you know, MSRP when we bought our Airstream. So, you know, great. The second obvious big ticket thing was the pickup truck. And here's the window sticker for the pickup truck. So on the window sticker for the pickup truck, the MSRP was $54,450. And I knew from the beginning that, I, you know, the truck I wasn't going to get as good a deal or as I otherwise would be able to because I knew how to special order it because of what we wanted. We wanted that F-150, but with the heavy-duty payload and the max towing, which just no one ever carries that. You can't buy one off the lot. So it had to be special ordered. 
but I knew at the very least I could call a few different dealerships and have them, you know, give me quotes on doing a special order. But it wouldn't be the same as, you know, buying something off a dealer's lot, which if we had jumped up to the F-250 instead, I probably could have gone to any, I mean, there's so many truck dealerships here in Texas. I could have gone down and probably gotten a much better price um, on an F-250 just because it would have been such so much more common and I could buy one off the lot. And so I have more, you know, I've got more control. But we wanted what we wanted, so we're going to end up paying a little bit more for that. So while I was in Hawaii, though, I did contact dealerships here in Texas and then finally, you know, selected one here in Austin. And, you know, I think that the price is reasonable. So the MSRP was 54450 and ultimately my price ended up being 48294 That's not with taxes. Um, after they discounted, and I know it was also a rebate that Ford gave or whatnot. Um, so 48 grand versus 54 and change, so six grand off. You know, it's, I think I could have done a lot better, but not if I wanted to get what I wanted. So, and, and the total after documentation and the blood sucking taxers, uh, government, the total for the truck is 50, uh, dollars and 91 cents. So, you know, between that and the Airstream, those are the two, I mean, those are the two obvious main purchases. Now let's go look at all the accessories and everything else that we bought um, to load up into the truck in the Airstream. I only made a couple of aftermarket modifications or additions to the truck. One is the easy tire monitor to monitor the tires not only in this truck but in the uh, Airstream trailer. and the WeatherTech uh, floor mats. I got these in both the front and the back and I do like these a lot. Um, they just fit so good. And anything the kids spill, any drinks and stuff, uh, it'll take care of it, so I'm happy with those. And the Tuno, Tono, I never know how to pronounce it, the cover. And this, I mean, this I wanted to get just because I wouldn't have the bike racks up here. I didn't want to have a camper top, um, but this this works great. And I saved some money because I installed it myself. So the other addition to the truck is the bike rack. And that consists of this Thule load bar. And this was $300 for these load bars, which, I mean, it's just a bar. I mean, I guess they're really well made and stuff, but it still seems pretty expensive, but I just really couldn't find any other option. And then I bought these two of these one up uh, bike racks that mount on top of it. And these are also quite pricey. These were like $250 each uh, with tax and everything. But I got to say, they are worth it. They are so easy to put the bike on and off. And let me just show you what it consists of. You basically just pop these up like that. Once those are up, you just take the bike, throw it up in here, and then just latch these back. That's it, literally, away you go. And then when you're done, or when you're gonna take it down, you just unhook these and the front one and then take it down. So again, these things are, they're really good. Um, so I'm really psyched with those. That, that was actually worth it. So this is most of the stuff we're bringing. Not, not all of it, but most of it. So um, starting over here. Oh, well, here's the Pro Pride hitch, right? So this, I think, I'm hoping is gonna be worth it. It was uh, about $3,000. And there's the stinger that goes onto the truck. Um, and this is supposed to eliminate all trailer sway. We'll see. Uh, bins, we got just an assortment of bins which we still have to fill up with clothes and stuff like that. Starting over here. 
toolbox with, uh, you know, assortment of tools that I think I'm going to need and that I've already used to put some things on the Airstream. This is a desk that folds up like a lap desk that I can use sitting on the bed, sitting on a chair. So this is going to be for, um, you know, for when I'm working from the Airstream. So still haven't used it yet. So we'll see how well it works. Then I've got this Vier um, air pump or air compressor. So this just hooks up to the batteries on the Airstream or the truck. And I've already used it to inflate the tires and everything. So that's pretty good. This guy here, this is just a big torque wrench, which I had to get to hook up the ProPride hitch, but this thing is great for, I mean, if I ever got to change tires, I mean, look at the size of this thing. But this is kind of pricey, but I think it's going to be a good tool to have. So we'll see again. And, you know, just a generic socket set, uh, DeWalt cordless drill. I use that a ton already. Um, let's see. In this bin, this is just assortment of, uh, this is just uh, supplies and stuff, so there's nothing really in here. But, in here, we've got the levelers. So this is the, not the Anderson ones, this, what, Beach Lane. So these are the, you know, levelers that you put under the tires. And there's the cordless drill. I've got this surge protector. Jumper cables, a heavy duty extension cord, ratchet set that I use that came with the uh, Pro Pride hitch actually. That's for disconnecting and connecting the, uh, the Pro Pride hitch. All right, the Blackstone griddle. So I've already tested this thing out. I just put it on the back of the truck and cooked some bacon and eggs with it, and it worked awesome. I just plug it right into the uh, Airstream. I had to buy uh, this adapter so that I could hook it into the Airstream, but I have this 10 or 12 foot hose. And that thing I think we're gonna use a lot, you know, just for cooking outside. Then clear source, the water filter. Um, and I also got some extra cartridges for it. Again, pricey, but uh, all our water is gonna taste great and be safe. And then we got the 10 foot extendable ladder. Need that to get up on the roof of the Airstream. And then collapsible chairs for the whole works. So we got these at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. And uh, they're really comfortable. And they have beer, beer holders, which is an extra bonus. But yeah, they're real nice. And then based on recommendations we saw from RVers, we bought this magma collapsible or a stackable uh, pot set, which comes, you know, we got an omelet, thing for it. It comes with a steaming basket. And the handle here just comes off and goes on each individual pot and pan. But we use this in the house right now and it works great. We also got stackable uh, utensils, stackable uh, bowls. All right. The Beachcomber wagon. This thing is awesome. We already haul the kids around it, in it and uh, what I like about it is giant wheels so like sand dirt mud anything it just goes right through it really easily and the handle right here is attached to the front wheels so when you turn the handle it turns the wheels and what that means is when you're pulling it and you go to turn it turns really easy as opposed to the ones where you just have the wheels attached to the um to the wagon and the handle you know has to pull the wagon around like this thing turns really nicely the one caveat with that is though if you get weight since the wheels are in the middle here, if you get weight in this corner, it can tip a little bit. So you gotta watch out if the kids are like, you know, hanging off the front here. But other than that, it works great and it collapses great. Like look, this thing just, you just pull this thing up and that's it. Kind of hard to see, but there, there it is. Throw it right in the truck. All right, bikes. I already showed you the bike rack on the truck. So we got my bike. Uh, which, you know, we didn't get anything super expensive because I don't know how safe they're going to be as far as them getting stolen or something, but we just wanted to get stuff that works well and we'll see where we go from here. But mine, and we got Jessica's right there. And we got pork chops, 
right there. And then we got this Allen Sports uh, tow behind, which I have attached to my bike right now. We've already taken the kids on it. This thing is great. These, I can't believe how you can spend up to like $600 for a tow behind thing, which I would never do. I mean, unless maybe I use it every day. But even this one was, uh, I think around $200, $210, something like that. But I bought it on Amazon through Amazon's used warehouse. And I think it was $130 or something, like 30 or 33% off. And it was basically new. It came in the new, pack in new package. Um, it's just, I think the box maybe wasn't the original box. But other than that, perfectly new. So I would definitely consider using the Amazon used warehouse for certain items, depending on what they are. But we're happy with that so far. Um, bike covers, since we have to store the bikes outside, we don't have a garage, so we can't just have them in the rain for the next year or two or however long I'm going. So I, got, I bought this double bike cover. Haven't used it yet, we'll see. And a giant heavy duty kryptonite lock um, to lock the bikes up since they are gonna have to be outside, um, you know, 24 seven. So haven't used this yet either, we'll see. I might have to get a little extension cable for it. And assorted bike helmets for all four of us. Oh, and this mat, this thing is great. I mean, this is the first time I actually unrolled it, but it's uh, 20 feet long by eight feet wide. So we're gonna use this all the time outside, I think. Um, really like that. And then right behind us here, the clam pop-up whatever you want to call this thing. It's got screens on all sides, so it's fully enclosed. We did buy these two extra um, panels for uh, one side, just to uh, block wind and maybe a little bit of rain. But this thing sets up and comes down really easily. So we're gonna plan on using the, the idea is to use this for kids and stuff, for an extra room. You know, they can be outside since I have to work and I need to be in the Airstream or wherever. You know, there's another, expand our, our home footprint, so to speak. And we have the $10 uh, blow up pool, which Jess bought and we'll probably take it with us. I don't know, we'll see how much space we have. And then in here, we've also got the, all the camera equipment and electronics that I bought. So there's tripod. There is the Canon G7X. Then we got the Mavic Air. We got the lapel mic, which is what I'm wearing right now. Then we have this other, I guess it's called a cat's tail mic or something. And also a GoPro Hero 6, which is the camera that I'm using right now. And also this, what is this thing? What's the brand of this? It's like some Chinese company. Ziyun or whatever. This is the, um, the gimbal. The electric gimbal that I have the GoPro mounted on right now that I'm using. Um, and I've used this for like snowboarding and stuff too and it worked out pretty well. And we also got uh, walkie talkies. And I also had to buy a license for these since um, if they're I guess above a certain wattage or uh, we already use these for just you know help me back up or you know trying to get the leveling blocks when I'm in the truck and stuff and you know, I'm sure we'll use them even more so those are good. All right. And that's most of the stuff out here, except for, let's see. Hard to see up there, but we got the Wi-Fi booster and the cell booster. Oh, I forgot a few other things here. And the trunk of the RV. We got our sewer hose and there's another length of it underneath the RV and we also bought a donut for it and then there's these essential items uh, two water hoses for drinking you know for, for the portable water um, one in case I guess one breaks uh, and we got another hose for doing the flush out because they say don't use the same one they use for drinking and we also have that uh, Sidewinder from Camco, you know, for putting the stinky slinky the sewer hose on. We got that. All right. 
inside there's a couple of other items in here enhancements here other things in here so there were the modifications to the table the decoupage so uh, how much did that cost And then there's the child proofing the bed, putting up uh, this railing, um, this bumper, and also, as you saw in my other video, the, the little wall that I can put across here to keep Logan in there. And then we also have the Oxygenics, is that what it's called? The shower head that everyone recommends. I also bought this triple uh, soap dispenser for the shower. And we have another single soap dispenser right there. So that's, that's most of our stuff. As I said, that's not everything. I mean, there's, there's still some you know, plates, utensils, other things. I mean, and I, I'm sure I forgot a bunch of things. Um, Oh, and then the other big items are the intangible things. Uh, insurance. So insurance for the Airstream. Insurance for the truck. And also um, uh, memberships. Escapees membership. We also got the Escapees mail forwarding service. Um, we got the KOA membership. And we got the Good Sam's membership, which we had to, I think, because we got our, our RV insurance through them as well. So the grand total of all of that stuff is, I don't know, I'll have to add it up. And then put it at the bottom here after I add it up. Um, you know, it's a lot of money, but I'd like to think, uh, and I, we don't think it's an investment, in, at least not a financial investment. It's an investment in happiness and living life and filling life with experiences. And you know, the Airstream at least, Airstreams hold their value pretty well. So even though, I mean, it doesn't go up in value, you know, you, if we do have to sell it in a year or two or whenever, you know, we should be able to re recoup, you know, some portion of what we spend on it. Um, so it's not all a sunk cost, which is good. But uh, I think it'll be worth it. We'll see in the end. I mean, uh, and I don't know how long, I mean, how much it's going to cost us to live on a month by month basis. I know, you know, just paying for the RV parks and stuff that we're going to stay in, that will be less expensive than the rentals that we have here, the rental that we had in Hawaii after we sold our house. Um, so that aspect of it will be cheaper. I don't know how much it will, will spend on, um, entertainment and food. You know, do we go out to eat a lot or not? Do we have to take the kids places each week and stuff? I don't know. Um, you know, we'll see after a year, I guess, or however long. We'll see how much we spend on a day-to-day -day basis and what our yearly budget is once, now that we're, you know, we've purchased everything that we need. But that's it. Aloha.